everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm super excited to share with all of you my roundup of products that I tried in the month of October. So if you're interested in hearing about my updated impressions and also getting ready with me today, then just stick around. So before we get started with the makeup, I did want to just quickly mention that I have a new filming setup that I'm experimenting with today. So up until now, I've been using my iPhone to film and I finally got a real DSLR camera. So this is my first time filming with it. Fingers crossed that this looks better than my usual iPhone. I would love to hear in the comments down below what you guys think about this setup. And also, if any of you are photography buffs, please let me know if you have any suggestions because I have never shot manual before, so it's definitely a work in progress. Before today's video, I have fewer makeup products than I normally do in a monthly roundup because I've been saving up for all of the upcoming holiday sales. I just bought a ton of things from the Beautylish gift card event and I have an extremely long wish list for the Sephora VIB event. So definitely subscribe down below if you want to see my hauls from those sales. But since I have fewer makeup products for this video, I thought it'd be fun to do this more in a get ready with me style. And in particular, since Halloween is right around the corner, I wanted to do an alien jellic inspired look. So I have this pretty fun futuristic dress on today. And alien jellic is a term that Pat McGrath often uses to describe her shadows and her looks. So I wanted to do a look with her products inspired by that. So normally I would start with base products, but because today's look is gonna be a really smoky eye, I'm gonna start off with eyeshadow using the Pat McGrath Celestial Odyssey palette, which has been by far my favorite eyeshadow product of the month of October. So to start off today's look, I'm going to use my Wayne Goss Artist Small and just dip that very lightly into this medium toned brown shade. And I don't have anything on my lids right now, but I'm just going to sweep this all over the crease area. Normally I start out looks with my Wayne Goss number 16, but I do like using this brush on days when I want more of a winged out shape. As you can see, this just leaves a really beautiful diffused layer of color and the shape makes it really nice for creating more of that triangle on the outside. And then I'm just gonna do the same thing on this eye. Okay, this is looking a little bit crazy right now, but don't worry, we have a lot of additional layers to go. Next with my Wayne Goss number 17, I'm gonna go into this deeper brown shade very lightly. And I'm gonna use this to just add some more smoke to this look because this is going to be sort of a deep look. And so I'm just gonna build this out on the outer third and then pull it outward in the direction of that really intense wing that I've started. So now for the fun part. So this shade over here, which is this beautiful glittery black shade with multicolor and multidimensional glitter, is my favorite shade in this palette. And in the past, I've used this dry, which does lead to a decent amount of fallout. So today I'll be trying it with my Mehran Mixing Liquid. So I just poured a tiny bit of mixing liquid on this plate, which I'm using as a makeup palette. And I've tried a bunch of techniques now with mixing liquid, and I would say the one that I like the most in terms of effect is wetting a brush and then putting it directly in the pan. But I don't wanna do that with my Pat McGrath shadows because I don't wanna accidentally mess them up with mixing liquid. So today I'm gonna to try something different. I'm gonna go in with the synthetic brush and I'm gonna really load it up with this pigment and then I'm gonna put this into the mixing liquid. So kind of in the reverse order. And I'm hoping that this way I can get enough product for both of my eyes, but I don't have to dip back into the pan with a wet brush. And then I'm just gonna stir this kind of in the mixing liquid. And I wanted to try this out because usually the way people use mixing liquid is with loose eyeshadows and then they sort of mix it with the mixing liquid to make it more of a liquid eyeshadow. So I'm kind of trying to emulate that a little bit. We'll see if it works. And I'm just gonna sweep this in the outer portion of my lid. And ooh, I am liking this. I feel like this is giving me that sort of liquid shadow effect that I was hoping for. Very pretty. So 
sweep this on this side. Ooh, okay, I am really liking this technique. So if you guys, like me, do not own loose shadows, but want to achieve a similar effect with your pressed pigments, try this version where you first load up the brush and then put it into the mixing liquid. All right, so now I'm just gonna try to even this out. This is kind of like a really intense eyeliner. I look kind of devilish at this point, but I think that's good for Halloween. All right, so now with the other shadows, I'm gonna try a slightly different technique. I'm gonna first just put my finger in the mixing liquid and just sweep that on the rest of my eyelid. And then with another finger, I'm gonna go into this palladium shade which I think will really match the dress that I have on, and just sweep that on the inner third. Ooh, okay, that's going on really nicely. So this is also a great technique if you don't wanna use brushes and don't wanna get them wet. Very pretty, look how pigmented that is. And then for that center part, I'm gonna go into this shade over here, which is just such a pretty blue, and I'm just gonna put this on the intersection. So hopefully this just helps everything blend together. Kind of feel like I'm finger painting on my lids right now, which is pretty fun. So you can see right now, there's kind of a little bit of a stark line. And so I'm gonna blend that out a little bit with my Wayne Goss number 19 in that original brown shade. So I'm just gonna use this softly to diffuse the edges a little bit. I don't want it to be too soft. I still kind of want that overall graphic effect, but I also don't want it to be too sharp. And then with that same brush, I want a really smoky lower lash line. So I'm gonna dip into that same shade and just sweep that on my lower eye bag. Also apologies if part of this tutorial is out of focus. I'm still getting used to how this camera focuses, which is a little bit different than my iPhone. So now with my Sonia G Builder, I'm gonna first go into this black shade again and just stamp this on the outer third of the eyes, just so that it matches the top. But because I'm not using mixing liquid on my lower lashes, I do need to be careful to avoid fallout. I will say though, this is the first time I've used this shadow and not had any fallout. So if you use mixing liquid, you don't even have to do your eyes before your base, which is great. And then cleaning off this brush, I want a bit of a pop on the lower lash line. And because we have this slightly orange vibe on parts of my dress, I'm gonna go into this shade over here, this time on the inner half, blending it a little bit into that black shade. And then finally, I'm going back into that palladium shade just for the inner third. All right, so here we have the completed eyeshadow. So I'm gonna go off camera and put on some eyeliner and then be back to do the rest of my face. So here we have the look with some black eyeliner. Overall, I'm really digging how this look is really complimentary to my dress and it's also giving me those alien jellic vibes that I'm going for. So for base product today, I wanted to try out this little Makeup Forever Ultra HD foundation sample. So I'm gonna try out the two lighter shades here. So here we have Y225 and Y335. I think these two mixed together will be a decent match for me because this looks like the right undertone, but a little bit light. This one's a little bit deeper, but a bit peachy. So I'm gonna first just dot 225 on my face. And I think that's actually a decent shade match. We'll see, <laughs> I might have to deepen this up a little bit later. Okay, that might've been a lot, but we'll try this out. So I just have a clean beauty blender here and let's see how this goes. All right, I feel like this is a decent shade match. For something called Ultra HD, it's actually not giving me super high coverage for this first layer, at least with my sponge. But there's plenty of product in these little capsules, so I can definitely build this up. So here's that first layer down, so you can still see my hyperpigmentation on my forehead. So I'm gonna go ahead with another layer. I take a tiny bit of that deeper shade on the forehead just because my skin tone is a little bit deeper there. Now just blending that in. So here we have two layers and overall I'm enjoying the finish of this foundation. It looks really natural and skin-like. 
It's definitely pretty light coverage though, at least applied with a sponge. This foundation does have a slight floral fragrance, but I find once it's on the skin, you can't really smell it. So to amp up the coverage, I'm gonna go in now with my Pat McGrath concealer in the shade LM10. Put this under the eyes and around my mouth and then where I have some hyperpigmentation. And then going back with my brush, I'm gonna carefully sweep this around the eye area. Try not to mess up the eyeshadow. I'll also use this to clean up that wing area a little bit. Alrighty, so here we have the base down. And looking a little bit more at this information card, it seems like this is meant to be a relatively lightweight product. So it's supposed to be sort of undetectable and a skin-like finish. It says it gives medium coverage. I would say with the two layers I have on now, it's a little bit more on the light medium side, but it is really pretty. I really like how it is quite undetectable. So really great if you want a pretty light coverage, natural makeup day. So normally I would go straight into powder now, but last night I was watching a video from Hindash going over his complexion routine, and he usually goes in with a cream contour or bronzer at this point, which is a step I usually skip because I'm not a huge fan of liquid and cream products, but I was inspired by his video, so I wanted to try out that technique. So I have here the Stick Bronzer Contour from Tristique. And I'm gonna use my Zoeva 110 brush, which is a brush that I got because Lisa Eldridge loves this. And I think this brush is only like $15 or so. So I figured, well, if she likes it and at this price point, it's worth buying. So let me just tap that into the hollows of my cheeks. See how that goes on. Okay, that's looking pretty good, very subtle but I'll also go over this later on with some powder bronzer. The stick is relatively firm, so I feel like I'm not picking up too much product even when I go ham with my brush. And I'm keeping the contour on the higher part, so I'm not really taking it all the way down. And then I'm also gonna just stamp this onto my jawline, give myself a little bit more of a V. And the shade is Brazilian Bronze. My forehead is naturally more tan and bronzy than the rest of my face, so I wanna bring that dimension back. I will say this foundation is really impressive because I feel like it's basically totally just settled into my skin, so I honestly can't really tell that I have foundation on. So here we have just a little bit more contour and dimension to my face. And now to set my T-zone, I'm gonna go in with this mini powder from Kosas. This is in the shade Comfy. So I'm just gonna take my Artist Medium brush from Wayne Goss, get a little bit of that on, and then sweep this across the center areas of my face. And I did use this once before, and I found that it provided a really nice finish. It set the face without mattifying it too much, and my skin is pretty dry, so I always wanna make sure that I don't dry out my face either. So with that light dusting of powder down, I'm gonna go in now with my brows. So I recently ran out of my favorite brow pencil, the Huda Beauty Balm Brows in the shade Soft Black. So I'll definitely need to pick up one of these during the Sephora VIB sale. So for today's look, I'll use this M Cosmetics brow pencil. This is in the shade Deep Taupe, and it's a pretty fine pencil, but definitely not as fine as the Huda pencil. So I find that this is better for days when you want sort of a soft, natural brow look, which in general, M Cosmetics does soft and natural super well. Obviously, this is not a soft, natural look that I'm doing today, but that's okay. The brows are not the main focus anyway. And then just to add a little bit more oomph to the brows, I'm gonna go in with my Dip Brow from Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is just a mini, but I've actually been really enjoying this formula, so I might pick up a full size in the upcoming VIB sale. I think this is the medium brown color, which has a little bit of warmth in it. So with the brows down, let's now go into the rest of the cheeks. For powder bronzer, I'm gonna go in with my Victoria Beckham Bronzing Brick. This is in the shade three, and I'm gonna take this contour shade and just lightly go over where I applied the cream contour earlier. So this will just help set that and also just 
add a tiny bit more pigmentation because we are after all going for a pretty glam look today. I've been really, really enjoying the formulation in this product. It's one of the most finely milled powder bronzers I've tried, so it's just so easy to apply. I basically never have to worry about streakiness with this product. It just goes on really effortlessly. I would say the only thing I don't love about this is it is a little bit on the warm side for my taste. I usually find myself going in with the contour as a bronzer simply because that's at least a little bit more neutral, but the formulation is impeccable. Next up for the cheeks, let's go in with the Blush and Glow Trio from Pat McGrath. And this is definitely one of my biggest favorites for the whole month. If you guys watched my video about this trio, you know that I love the blushes in the Galactic Sun Trio, which is the lighter trio. I have Desert Orchid and Divine Rose in the full size, and they're just divine. I would highly, highly recommend that trio. This trio features two blush shades I had not tried before, but I've quickly fallen in love with these. Paradise Venus, which is the one I'm going to use today, is just such a perfect everyday terracotta shade. So with that same brush, I'm just going to tap into Desert Orchid and brush this all over my cheeks. I've also been really loving the Love Struck shade in this palette, which kind of surprised me because this one is pretty bright and not usually the kind of shade I go for, but it's extremely flattering on the skin. It reminds me a lot of my Surat blush in Rougier, except it's a little bit easier to apply and a little bit lighter in tone. But just look how easily this is going on. I would suggest applying these more pigmented blushes with a fluffy brush like this. Kudos to the commenter in my last video who suggested that. As you can see, that was just so easy to apply and just looks so pretty on the skin. Now going back with my Artist Medium, I'm gonna dip lightly into this highlighter. And I've actually been so obsessed with this highlighter and this formula ever since I got it. I thought since this was the deeper palette, the highlight might not work for me, but it's actually a pretty light highlighter. And you can see that it's just so beautiful for my skin tone. It doesn't really leave any cast, but it's definitely a pretty high shine highlight. Now to tie together the look, I'm gonna go in with my mini booster and use this also as inner corner and brow bone highlight. But just look at that shine, it's so high impact, but yet blends so seamlessly into the skin. I was not expecting one of my favorite highlights of the year to come in cardboard packaging, but I don't know, this highlight is giving the rest of my highlights a run for their money. So to finish off this look now, let's go in with the lips. And I wanted to try out with you guys the Lisa Eldridge lip pencil in the shade Affair. This is one of her latest releases. You can see that this is a really pretty mid-tone caramel brown pink. And I actually picked up a lot of items in her recent launch, so definitely subscribe down below to be notified when that video comes out. But I'm still waiting for a couple of the boxes to arrive, so for now, let's just go in with this pencil. So here's the pencil just on the perimeter of my lips, and I picked this up because her Gloss Embrace in Affair is one of my top lip products of the entire year. It's probably my most used lip product because I just love that shade on an everyday basis. So I wanted to try it out in lip pencil form. Her formula is also just so beautiful. It's incredibly creamy and easy to apply on the lips, super smooth, no tugging, but it does have staying power. So for today's lip color, I wanted to go in with Hustla from Huda Beauty, which is my latest addition to my lipstick collection. If you guys have been watching my videos for a while, you know that I'm absolutely obsessed with this formula and this line. And so recently I picked up Hustla just to try out some more shades. So let's put this on the lips. So here we have Hustla on the lips, and again, I am so obsessed with this formula. It is so comfortable and nourishing on the lips while still having decent staying power and really good opacity. I will say though, I'm still a little bit on the fence about this shade. I started out with Moneymaker and love that shade. It's one of my favorite lip products. Bosch Chick is also really great, just a hint deeper as you guys can see here. 
Hustla does kind of go a little bit into the concealer lip territory if I wear it without a lip liner. It can make me look a little bit dead. I do think it looks pretty good though with today's look. I feel like combining it with a fair gives it a little bit more definition. And also because we have such a cool toned look, I think the cool to neutral undertones in this lipstick actually pair pretty well. So here we have the final look. What do you guys think? I hope this kind of captured some of the Aliangelic vibes that I was going for. I think this would be a pretty fun glam look for Halloween, especially paired with this kind of space age outfit. So now before I close out this video, I did just want to also talk about some other favorites from this month that I didn't get a chance to put on my face. So I know this is becoming a giant Pat McGrath video, but I had to mention these little mini lip glosses that I got. I've already loved the shade Flesh 6 for a long time. I have this in the full size and it's possibly my favorite lip gloss in general. And so I'm excited to have this now in a mini version. I've also been really enjoying these two lighter shades. Sunset Seduction is a perfect everyday, very flattering pink gold shade. And Love Potion has been really surprising to me. I actually reach for this one a decent amount, even though it's so light. I find that it makes my lips just look really juicy and plump, and who doesn't want that? So I've actually been really enjoying this shade in particular. There's also some new skincare products that I tried in the month of October that I've rapidly fallen in love with. So the weather has been changing pretty dramatically where I live. We kind of went from summer to fall and now almost winter really quickly. And my skin, which is already on the drier side, has been getting really dry. And so I picked up some new skincare products to try out to help with that. And so far it's been really great. In particular, the hero product for this month has been the Ceramidin Cream from Dr. Jart. As you can see here, this is a really thick cream. Honestly, when I first got it, I was a little bit worried because it's so thick and almost like an ointment when you first squeeze it out of the tube. But it's exactly what my skin needed for these colder months. It just feels like an additional skin barrier and it really locks in moisture throughout the day. It does have a pretty strong herbal scent to it, which I personally really enjoy, but I did want to call that out in case you're not a fan of those sorts of fragrances. I've also been a fan of this emerald oil from Herbivore. And what I've been really loving about this is it's just such a lightweight oil. For most of this year, I've been using the oil from Marie Veronique, which I really love. And that's a very thick, nourishing oil. This one is definitely on the thinner side, but it still feels really hydrating and comfortable on the skin. And it just sinks in really quickly. I would definitely recommend this oil if you're someone who's a little bit newer to oils, you don't really love the feeling of having oil on your face, but you are struggling with some dryness in these colder months. And then finally, we have this sunscreen from Peter Thomas Roth. Again, you can probably sense a theme with all of these products. They're all about hydration. So this one is technically a moisturizer sunscreen combo, but I find on my skin, it's not moisturizing enough to use by itself. So in the mornings, I love going in first with my ceramidin cream and then with this sunscreen. My previous sunscreen would just really dry out my face as the day wore on, but I find that this one stays pretty comfortable. My only caveat would be this does leave a little hint of a greasy film. So if your face isn't very dry, then maybe just use this by itself. And also for me, if I'm doing a face of makeup, I usually am not a huge fan of using this first. But on days when I'm going makeup free and just want my face to feel nice and comfortable and hydrated throughout the day, I've been really loving the sunscreen. So that's it for my October roundup. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely let me know down below what you think about this format, which is a little bit more of a hybrid get ready with me monthly favorites type of video. Let me know if you like this better or the kind where I just kind of go through the products with my face already done. Also do let me know if you have any feedback on this filming setup. I'm sure this is not gonna be the ideal setup since, as I mentioned, this is my first time using a manual camera. It took me a while to get the white balance and the lighting to not look completely terrible. So hopefully it's only on the up and up from here on, but I would love to know your feedback down below. Also with the Sephora VIB sale right around the corner, I would love to hear down below what you guys have on your wish lists. 
I will be releasing a video with my Sephora VIB recommendations and also with my wish list. So stay tuned for those videos. Thank you all so much for joining me today. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you all so much for joining me and I'll catch you next time. Bye.